guys rolling? He's yep, we're good. Cool. What uh, what fish do you like? Jesus Christ, you gotta flush those, man. Why don't you flush them? Bro, how about a proper, proper burial? <laughs> Damn, we got him. We buried I'm ours. We buried here. ours and can't know how. Oh, shut, shut the camera off. I, did I ever tell you the part that made someone So now that I'm retired, though, I can talk about gambling more, which is everybody knows you as not only a great blogger, legendary blogger, Thank you. internet personality, pardon my take, your resume is long. It's Nick Foles long. Nick Foles long. Uh, I would say, I would say gambling though is part of your stick. And there's a lot of questions I was curious about yes. um, from a gambling uh, standpoint. You're, a, you're, I would classify you as a degenerate, right? One hundred percent. And I, you should back up there because when you say shtick, it's not. It's you. And it's me for better or worse because there's definitely been some moments, and I, I have this problem now. Where because I have a podcast that's popular, because I have a voice, a Twitter, and Instagram, I do feel a little guilty sometimes talking about gambling to the point where people want to gamble. That's but their choice. I'm also just being me because I've been a gambler since I was 12 years old. Yeah. Um, I, I won a turtle race at a bar in Key West, Florida. At $100. 12? Yeah. At 12. 12. Why were Family you in vacation, a bar in Key West? Key West, Florida, hundred dollars on a turtle race. How, where were your parents? They were. They brought me to it. Oh, that's yeah. Great. So then I was like, "Whoa, this was awesome." Peeling obviously, back the curtain here. Yeah, obviously, bit. I didn't go like from that to you know the next day putting in a five team parlay. Right. But it's a slippery that, slope. Turtle races. Next thing you know, yeah. you're, you're you're you know selling your your belongings. Right. Had a bookie for basically my whole life. I mean, I. The way I would put it is, I've always kept it in the control of, like, you know, I'm not like uh, Craig Carton, which was a scary story, a guy who got way over his head, millions of dollars. I've always lost what I can, mm -hmm. but I'm a lifelong loser. Right. And I enjoy it to such a level that even losing... You're paying for your entertainment. Correct. That's the way I think about gambling. And I've always liked gambling, not on football or any of that shit. College football, you know, unofficial unofficial bets with with guys on college football. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you gonna do? Suspend me from the NFL? I don't fucking. Well, it's yeah. gonna make it tough when those three guys get hurt. Uh, uh, so Eagles. yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, you you mentioned bookies and guys being down big, which you've never done. Because when we talk about gambling, I'm like, hey, I want to play this, like whatever. Yeah. And you're like, play that. I got it for like 150. dollars I'm like. As rich as you are, and now you are a rich guy. I'm not rich. I mean, but you're kind of a rich guy. Yeah, I'm usually... You live in Manhattan. I, I live in Brooklyn. Oh, you live in Brooklyn? Yes. So, oh, well, you, the more you know, you live near... G yeah, a, a friend of ours. Neighbors. Neighbors of a friend of ours. So so, so you're in a high-rent district. Yes. Um, I have some money now. So you're still laying $150 bets, which is... Mean, more than that, okay. but yeah. We it's usually about 500 But yes, oh, I never okay. go like... There are some people... I've never been like, hey, let me put... 10 grand on a game. Understood. Right. Can't say I haven't done that. Right. Um, but I would say, like, I'm always interested because I've never gotten down and I have the money to get out of it. Bookies, like, that's a thing, right? Oh, that's yeah. still a very big thing. What's the worst bookie story you heard? Uh, so, I mean, I, I can speak personally. I've had, I've had all kinds of bookies. I've had bookies who made me meet up with them for, like, $25, and I'm... Come on, man! Mm -hmm. I have to, you know, drive to you and give you twenty five dollars. But right. that was kind of how they would they would be. I've had friends who've gotten down very, very big. Um, you know, had to stop. I, I'd have friends who basically they would just disappear for a couple months because they get down so big that they, they what would just happen can't if go they out. don't disappear? No, 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 not disappear from the bookie, but disappear like they can't go out, they can't do anything social because they have to save all their money. Oh, okay, kind of thing. Okay. Um, I had one bookie who actually my boss Dave Portnoy once doxed me. My phone number. Tweeted out my phone number. That was the only time I've ever been lucky. Uh, he tweeted out my phone number. I was down probably about a couple grand to my bookie. I had to change my phone number. I never heard from him again. Right. So I wasn't dodging yeah. him. I always pay. Yeah. But that one was a bank error. Yeah, well, favorite. that was Dave's fault. Right. 
So, right. I mean, I think I'm sure the bookie understood. Right. Well, he's probably still trying to text my old so, number. So what about people that got down and you heard like second or third hand somebody, do people get their kneecaps broken no, still? Or is that not, is that like faux pas? Yeah, it's not like that anymore. I don't think that like, the, I, of course, some of the places that I've had bookies, I know that they're connected to something bigger, right? Like I, I everyone thinks the Italian mafia. You don't want to find out. Sopranos, you just whatever. don't want to find out. That's good, right? No. I only bet 10. But you won. What did I say? What did I tell you? It's a short thing. Right. There's someone up higher that probably uh, could do something. But at the end of the day, bookies now, they just want to keep you as a customer, especially with legalization of gambling. Right. So a lot of times you'll just work out a payment plan. You know, I'm such a lifetime loser that my bookie will give me a discount on my losses. Right. So it just doesn't it doesn't work how it used to work in the movie. Sick brag there. Whoa, what? <laughs> that you're a lifetime loser to the point. Yeah, oh where yeah. They bookie you get like you know uh, frequent flyer miles. The the bookie gambler relationship is one of the closest relationships in my life. Like you you're the person that you have as your bookie, you have such a tight bond with because they you're in contact with them not a good bond yeah but you're in contact with them at all times how many how many years of being a father before your kid usurps that relationship it's got to be at least like four or five yeah because in your first couple years it's not a big deal when did you start talking you can't i don't help. know we got to get into this because yeah, we'll i don't know into, milestones but like but, but what i wanted to ask you about if you were down to a bookie big, and I yeah. know it's 2019, these are new wave bookies. They're right. they're they're progressive bookies. Right. What what's the worst city to be down to a bookie in? Uh, I would it would probably be New York still. I would imagine. What about Detroit? Detroit would probably be bad. Um, there's see, I just don't know if bookies do this anymore. What about like I Brighton don't... Beach? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's like, I have one guy who. So at this point, I still have guys in different cities and because i like to do this thing where so this is really pulling back the curtain where real gamblers they shop the lines mm -hmm. so they always say well i'm gonna try to get the best line yeah i'm gonna go across the street and try to get a better line than i got here right so i understand that concept i have multiple bookies to do that but i never actually do it and right. what ends up happening is i just lose to all of them Got you. So I have one here who he's kind of told me stories where it would never be a I'm gonna break your kneecaps. He would probably just come and embarrass you in your in your job. Yeah. And that's way knock worse. Knock some shit off your desk. No, not even knock your shit. Like if 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 you if you're sitting in a uh, if you're in an accounting firm. Yeah, you don't in, want people in to know you're a degenerate. And some guy walks up to the front door and he's like, Hey, I got an appointment with uh, Jack over there. Right. And then he just walks in and he says, hey, Jack, you owe me $3,000. What's going on? People, that would be way worse than getting your kneecaps broken. Because people don't want to do business with you. Right. And also every, all your coworkers would look around and be like, is this guy serious? <sighs> yeah. I mean, or... yeah. I mean, I, I, I totally get that. I mean, I just think of like places like I look at a map in New York. I mean, if we were to zoom in on New York, the place that to me looked like a place I wouldn't want to be down to a book, it would be Brighton Beach. Yeah. There's a lot of Russian guys there. Yes. Nothing against Russia. Seems like a lovely place. Lately, it seems like the biggest American comp. Yeah. But they don't fuck around. That was political. Yeah, it was, was a little... I was wondering when you were going to get Lib on me. <laughs> yeah, well, Lib Cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Lib so, Cat does come out sometimes. So what's the future of gambling? Because you, 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 you were kind of like hinting at some changes and... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be legalized everywhere. I think bookies will still always have a place because guys still always want to bet on credit. Mm -hmm. And they want to bet the money they don't have. Because mm -hmm. when you go to Vegas and you want to bet, you have to put down all the money beforehand. And you can't just say, hey, I want to bet $1,000 on this game. I got you at the end of the right, week. Right, right, right. Um, so I think bookies will always exist. Probably a little less once they get the mobile app. I just find it all fascinating because what I enjoy is the evolution of media and how it talks about gambling is going to be fascinating to me. Because I'm a guy who is a degenerate at heart and it's authentic. But you're also a professional now. But you see a lot of people who have who have come out of the woodworks, every Fox, ESPN, all these networks, they say we need we need the gambling guy. We need this gambling segment and it's insulting to people who have been gambling all their life and know how to talk the lingo right. and know how it goes. We the Bleacher Report halftime show that they throw out there for the NBA West or Eastern right. Conference Finals. 
I like I couldn't believe they put that on TV. They were talking. They were actually explaining how an over under works. So well, you shouldn't have been here before the set. I mean, we're about to. This is the perfect lead in because we're doing this prop bet thing, and I'm sitting here. I've always bet spreads. Yeah. And like odds, I've never fully understand the minus three hundred, minus two hundred. Okay. So this is good. I have written down on my prop bet page, which is a good little guide for me. Uh, now people are going to watch this and take me to the cleaners, but that's okay um, because no, you know what? That's okay because gambling Twitter and the gambling community is fine if you admit it. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. when you don't. Listen, I have written down here plus equals dog, <laughs> minus equals fave. Yes, and higher plus equals biggest dog. This is so that you don't get suspended by the NFL. To be well, like, what does it mean? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What, is, what does the I over mean, under mean? I, I, I think I'm in the clear there. You want to you want to run this segment? Let's run the prop bet segment. We've yes. got uh, the Wizard of Oz behind us in the recording studio. Mike, he's gonna he's gonna use that beautiful Midwestern this is soothing cool voice. Studio. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You like the taxidermy? Yes, I do. Do you like what's your? Do you see the fire? Oh, Robert E. Lee, nice little southern. Oh God, for you. We're gonna cut that. <laughs> Robert E. Lee didn't look what? like that. Those are fucking. <laughs> hey. Do you see? Uh, do you Chris see Long's the... putting the statues back up. <laughs> it's Colonel Sanders. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Colonel Sanders gave us good chicken. <laughs> what? Uh, you see Firestorm in the corner there? Oh, that's sick. in Spanish. I do. Yes, that's awesome. When you sell so many fucking, uh, you know, VHS tapes that you got to go international. What are the residual checks at Howie gets? We've talked about this. My dad and I'm living with my parents right now. I know, which is, which is I knew that struggling going that. into retirement to like move right in with your parents with two kids, but. My dad, like, free and I'm always around the free babysitting is great, but, uh, and he's a great granddad in all seriousness, but, you know, he'll walk downstairs sometimes and be like, check out my royalty check, you know, like <laughs> kind of fucking around. How much? It's not, it's not changing. It's not moving the needle. But, you know, when you got NFL and Fox money, it's kind of the royalty. That idea of a residual check, I hope to someday. It's a flex. It is a flex. Even if it was... Like I've been on, we we've been on Bar Rescue together. Yeah, yeah. How sick would it be if we had a, a check coming from John Taffer? For thirty six dollars. I'm framing cents. it. I don't care. I'm framing it. Once a month, once a quarter. It's like my wife's not Nike stock. She fuck. It's like she bought a Nike stock when she was in high school, and it comes back for like ninety nine cents, and she slaps it on the fridge, and she goes, "Somebody's got to make some fucking money around here." So shout out to Meg. Um, let's hit it, Mike. Prop bet number one. All right, number one. Will the real OJ32 Twitter account be verified by Twitter in 2019? I'm going to say yes. Why? Because there are the fake ones that are confusing it and muddling the water. I don't think, and also Twitter, let's be honest, I think their um, their bar for verification is, low. is very low. And Although I heard it's getting more stringent. But either yeah. way, it has been low. Yeah. OJ on Twitter is the worst of Twitter like a spotlight of the worst of Twitter because everyone thinks that they have this hot take yeah. that murder is bad. Yes. Okay. 2020. Go, go next. Go to the next. <laughs> All right. 2020 presidential candidates. Not the whole list, but we got <laughs> top we, list. We here. pulled the. Sure, the you want to do this? The non-traditional ones. Live okay. cat. All right. We we got the four most likely. Sorry, let me get my hand out of your shot. Mark Cuban plus ten thousand. Mark Zuckerberg. Plus thirty thousand, Michael Avenatti plus ten thousand, Michael Bloomberg plus three thousand. Bloomberg's got to be the one. I feel like Cuban is still a few years away from running for president. He will, but he he's not he's not there yet. According to my my chart here, higher plus is the biggest dog, so that would make Bloomberg the favorite. Yes, and I would take him. Okay. I would take the odds on Mark Cuban. Cubes, though, don't you feel like they've got enough going on? He's got Doncic. He's got to get Kristaps going. There's enough going on down in Dallas that sure. he probably doesn't want to but do this But this is right one of now. those bets that I can't. Like, listen, like Bloomberg, eh, eh, you know, kind of like I'm kind of ambivalent on that at, at best. Do you think? Avenatti, I will fucking move. I hate Trump. And I haven't moved yet, but Avenatti, because he's like supposed to be on my side, right. but I can't stand him. Right. If he's president, it's. Would you ever run for president? No. Not even a thought. No. You know how many 
backs you have to stab. Oh, it's the worst if job ever. If you become a president, yeah. you, you, you have to, I've seen House you of have cards. to make a deal with the devil. Right. You've seen House yeah. of Cards. Uh, okay, so I set some lines for your uh, beautiful newborn son okay. who will grow to be a man. Yes. Um, will your, what will your child's first word be? <laughs> Little cat. <laughs> this is the guys on the set. Little cat. Uh, one, one to two. Is that, am I saying that right? Uh, or half? Yeah, yeah, what are you, what, what's the odds you're trying to use the, here? The odds I'm trying to use here? Uh, Dada, for instance, is ten to one. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. one to two, yes. yes. Yeah. Mama's four to one. Okay. Chonk is two to one. Okay. And Little Cat is one to two. What about any swear word? Because, and I'm going to ask you this yeah. right now, at what point do you have to stop swearing around a child? When they turn like two and a half, or two, no, before that, when they yeah. turn like when they turn like one, because I have some change. Listen, it's fun because like Waylon's three, I can't say anything around him. You know, Luke's six months old, and I'll be like, "Hey, you haven't seen your daddy all day, motherfucker." Yeah, right, right, <laughs> and that's funny. And my wife laughs, or like you know, I don't call him a motherfucker, but like imagine I did. Right, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. The baby doesn't know what you're saying. Do you think, can you be self-deprecating? Or like, hey, yeah, get like, some milk, and you're like, you like this shit? You like this milk? Right, you know, exactly. Like, can you do that kind of stuff? Because I, mean, I... If your wife's cool, which but, I... But hold on, here's here's my question, right? I consider myself having a good sense of humor. At some point, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, would, I would say that's fair, yeah. right? I'm, I'm decently funny. Yeah. De- if yeah, I at least. keep the self-deprecation and fuck around with my kid... I assume he will grow up to have a good sense of humor. Yes. So can I, like, make fun of my child is what I'm asking. Absolutely. My son has a mullet. Yeah, he's awesome. And everybody loves it. It's going to make him really cool. And at some point, I hope he looks back like, oh, my dad was a silly, funny dad. Not the embarrassing dad. Because there's a thin line. Right. Where it's, like, actual trauma that your dad was such a piece of shit. Well, you're... I mean, every dad is going to get to a point where they become like roasted by their son. Like yes. no matter what you do with Waylon, yes. he's going to be I roast 13. my dad all the time. Wait, he's going to be 13 or 14 and he's going to be like my dad's not cool anymore. Good luck. I'm everyone's so fucking cool. No, everyone's Look at the been guests there. I have on my show. There's everyone who gets that. Point. I want you to rank um, out of these four professional teams. Mm-hmm. The teams you'd be most okay with him adopting as favorite. Okay. Down to the ones you would be okay. least. I think Go we know it. who would be least. Yes. But the Packers. four teams are the Packers, the Vikings, the White Sox, and the Cardinals. <sighs> Packers definitely worst. Okay. Uh, Cardinals second worst. Vikings third, and then White Sox fourth. So you really don't have a White Sox. No, because so if no. your kid turns out to be less of a pussy than you, you're okay with that. <laughs> there you go. That's perfectly put. Okay. Perfectly put. Okay. If he was a Packers or Cardinals fan, though, it would be. But if he becomes be a devastating. But, but if he becomes a White Sox fan, like he's tough. Yeah, right. Then I'd be like, that's fine. He can kick my ass. Yeah, and he's if my that. son can kick my ass when he's with fourteen, that. I'm fine. I with fully that. expect Waylon to kick my ass because he's built like Kyle. Yeah. I mean, like, he's just... And if he's like Kyle, it's going to be tough. Right. And my, physically, I'm only going like this. Okay, I want you to set lines on this okay. in the lifetime of your son. Okay. Uh, and what is your son's name, by the way? I'm not saying it. Okay. Lil Cat. Lil Cat, okay. We're going with Lil Cat. Lil Cat. And well, also, I've told you my son's name. Yeah, but I want to give you a chance. No, you, Lil you're, Cat. You're totally... Yeah. Lil, I want him to have a normal... Uh, that, you're different. We'll get to that later. You're different because you actually, like, you made a lot of money... Doing something that you were super skilled at yeah. that 0.001 percent of people can do. Yeah, I'm just a piece of shit guy who's online mm. who still hasn't made enough money. Your son to... could become a prolific bookie. True. And and this is a great movie. It, it comes full circle, and you owe your son money, and he's got to do the tough thing and break your kneecaps. Yes, that's true. But I don't have the. I am in that weird spot where I'm not actually famous but i'm pseudo weirdly famous so i'm trying to not you're famous have my we'll get kid to that but you're you're famous because have a weird life i understand and we'll, and we'll that'll be in the da- in the dad segment okay but, but i want you to set um these lines uh on the robot apocalypse happening during your kid's uh lifetime mm-hmm. what's the line set at well, can i go something different yeah. because i think in 50 years or so um now you really want to get lib climate change to such an extreme we'll basically just have a bunch of biodomes all the rich people living in biodomes everyone outside of it 
has to fight for scraps and survive, kind of like a Mad Max. I never even saw that movie, but I think that's right. Yeah, it sounds right? about right. Uh, so I don't think I'll make enough money for my kid to get into the Biodome, so that's probably how he'll go. Okay, he'll go with the Biodome. He'll but be I on think the outside. I think Terminator could happen before Biodome. Okay. What, I would I would counsel you as a dad to build a shelter. Yeah, right. Not that you can do that Move here. Move to, like, Montana. Yeah, Get Move. next to a river that flows downhill. You've really... Yeah, I know. You've done your research. Oh, the world's going to be done in Can about 1,500 years. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, will our kids have to learn how to drive? Oh, that is a great question. I would actually say no. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have to learn how I to don't drive. think so. I think we will have fully automated self-driving cars in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. even sooner. No, I agree. And I'm, I'm going to be one of those like last holdouts that still likes to drive my land cruiser and shit like that. Like right. there's no way the romance of driving. Plus I don't trust machines. Right. Um, right. You can throw all the statistics you want at me about human error, but human error is, is, is skewed by the fact that most human beings are fucking morons. Correct. And I'd like to think that I'm not. I am. Okay. Uh, what age? I mean, I'm, what I'm age, smart enough to know I'm dumb. What age will your kid have a cell phone? I'm gonna set the over under at seven. Oh, I was gonna say like four. Whatever, whatever the age when I don't want to take care of him, and I should be like, here, so watch you got this. The, you got the under for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's called an iPad. Right, but it, you need a portable iPad. Yes, but I mean, I guess. But what we do as parents and welcome to the club. That iPad's going to do really well for you. Right. Especially if you have sex twice and you have a second kid. <laughs> right. Because then you're going to need the kid to, like, chill the fuck out while you deal with the other, the newer child. I'm just trying to survive okay. right now. Yeah, we'll start Don't with them. Don't stress me out with that. Uh, what are you most afraid of your son finding on a Google search about you? Oh, jeez. That's a good question. I don't know. There's, I mean, I pissed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> on camera with Mark Schlereth twice. That one's a little weird. The George Brett one where we had him pour chili down our ass. That one's a little weird. But at least it weird. was George Brett. Yeah, that one's a little could weird. Could have been Subway Jared. Yeah, there could have been way worse, guys. Um, Pouring, like, uh, the cheesesteak that they did at Subway <laughs> down your ass. I I don't know if there's anything. I mean, there's going to be a conversation yeah. at some point where he's like, wait, what's what is your job, Ben? Before the sex talk? Yeah, probably before... As soon as he can Google, right? As soon as he can start putting it all together. Um, People will believe that online. Because, you know, every time I tweet that Waylon sees something on his timeline, it. people believe me. The kid's three years old. So. I think the harder part, and you're probably going to have to deal with this too, is having the don't gamble, don't smoke weed, don't drink, don't do these things I when you're underage. That. And then they can just Google it and say... Dad, here's but everything not, that you've done. Okay, but I, but, but the, I, I've never been shown on camera. For instance, I thought about it with the weed thing. Yeah, and this, this comes into the the fame and kids territory. Like, a, how much fame is too much, and then how do you, how do you architect your career so that it actually is responsible for your kid? Because right. I grew up in the spotlight with my dad, and my dad wasn't a personality. He was more of like just larger than life. And so like I, I felt that stress. Our kids are going to feel that stress with us. Hopefully yes. if I'm successful at what I'm doing now, even more so. But I mean, like I do think about that stuff. And I think about like, listen, my dad's had to deal with it. Like my dad the other day, you know, that whole the revelation that I smoke weed. What a fucking shock. What would the Vegas odds on that be? Uh, but my dad comes home from picking up a takeout order. And he's like this guy at the, the store, man, I. I, had, I lost my keys and they were in my bag and he's like, hey, they're in your bag. And so I go down and I pick up the keys. I'm like, oh shit. And then the guy says to me right there at the register, there's a family behind me. He goes, oh, your son's got you on the weed, doesn't he? So like, <laughs> so yes. there's, so my dad's just like, yes. I came here for a turkey burger, bro. Yes. Like, so, so you're such a disappointment. So, so that's the thing. It works both ways. I mean, there's other family members that, that are feeling your legacy, whatever it yeah. is, but your kid is really going to. Yeah, I... And video um, lives forever. Right, video lives forever. I struggle with it because I definitely... You, like I said, you're a little different. You have a level... I think you... Most people, they get famous and the money grows at the same mm -hmm. time. So you can... Not that you're intentionally trying to remove yourself a little, but you are able to remove yourself a little from day-to-day -day living. Yes. And... It's not socially acceptable to go up 
and not harass, but like people don't go up to you and think that the, that you're friends with them, right? Right. Whereas my whole entire job is to be relatable and have people connect with me. So I don't. I'm never mad about it. I actually enjoy it more than it actually brightens my day when someone comes up and is like. Hey, Big Cat, I'm listening to you right now. That's the that's the best feeling in the world. I've gotten a lot of that from your fan base. Right. Though. It's the best feeling so it's in the world. A taste of it. But I think it would be weird if they did that with my son. If they right. walked up and they're like, oh, hey, what's up, Joey? Yeah. And I saw now, your dad. Yeah, now strangers are talking to a little kid. Chili up his ass. Right. And strangers are talking to a little kid, and a little kid doesn't understand why a stranger knows his name yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. So for me, I understand I'm. A public figure i expect it and enjoy it mm -hmm. to a like a great level there's whenever i talk about like meeting people it's 99 out of 100 the best experience in the world yeah there's usually one guy the one who might linger a little too long what does the one percent do what's the usually it's need? just too drunk it's too drunk and too drunk is they awful. just think that we're like gonna go and have a basically, 20 minute conversation yeah or, or a night from the hangover yeah you yep. know that we're he met me and we are about to go on the greatest night ever it's like dude I, to be totally honest i got a little diarrhea i'm gonna eat these chicken wings mm -hmm. i'm gonna go home yeah and eat some day ice in cream. the life yeah like that's the night day so in the life. we're not gonna we're not about to have that night so i want to talk about your career what's made you so famous because i actually think you're famous the first question i had written down here was are you famous and i thought it'd be profound but you actually answered and you said you're not which i call bullshit on okay i think you're more recognizable than me and you would call me famous would you or would you not i would call you famous i guess it's a weird definition because social media kind of screws everything up i would agree that i'm probably more recognizable than you but that's also zeke is yeah, I mean, people can see me coming from, they see it, and they're just like, here he comes. Respect. Um, but they also expect to see me. Right. So no one expects to see you mingling with the regular people. I guess. I guess not. I mean, people in my hometown know I do. That's different. They but, get taken aback. They're like, why is he fucked? Does he realize he's got money now? And yeah. Like, I'm like, no, I like to do the same shit I've always done. Right. So you're, you're definitely famous. I, I guess I would consider myself semi-famous but it's so no, weird because famous, bro. here's how I'd, here's how i describe it when you think about people getting famous it usually happens very quickly mm -hmm. you're in a big movie boom you're famous you get drafted in the nfl boom you're famous whatever may happen it usually happens in a very short period of time and then you're just famous yeah for the rest of your life yeah very few people slowly like realize this level of fame that's kind of what our journey has been where it's been eight years, and it's day by day, so it doesn't feel like there's ever been a moment, mm -hmm. boom, you're famous, mm -hmm. because it's happened so gradually. Mm -hmm. Are you the most valuable player at Barstool? Oof. I mean... You're my favorite player. I don't know. I wouldn't and say I'm most valuable. It's, it drops for a while. Well, Dave is the, the is Barstool. So. Understood. You had to get that in there. Well, no, he is. I, I don't think anyone would disagree with cut that. Cut the head off the snake. The snake will die. If they cut the big cat off Barstool, what happens? I would say that it would be a it would be a, a pretty big loss, if we're speaking honestly. Like, yeah, I think, I think I'm the, the second most important person. If Where's we're just PFT? speaking up, Where's PFT? He's probably in that three, four, five. Yeah. I mean, the 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 where it gets tricky is I'm more ingrained, and PFT would tell you this as well. I'm more ingrained in like the buildup of yeah. Barstool. Yep. And it's probably yeah, you're Kevin an too. Yeah, like K, you know, there's the originals: KFC, K Marco, myself, Spidelberg, like these guys who what they've done has been invaluable in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. So as as unbelievable as PFT is and as how much part of my take has unlocked all this stuff, he would tell you as well that in terms of like the history of it, it's probably a little different because some of the guys have been around for longer. Some quicker uh, PMT answers, quick hitting, dumbest you've felt. Mm. Dumbest I've felt. On an interview. On an interview. Uh, I think when we had Carissa Thompson on, we got like six facts wrong in a row. And uh, I think we said she went to Washington State University. She's cool, though. She was cool so she about it. she probably helped you play she it She was cool about it. Um, I'm trying to think. Dumbest I have felt. I screwed up here and there on interviews. I don't know. Usually it's when it comes down to, like, getting a, a fact wrong 
or thinking that someone's been in something that they haven't been. Right. Or someone, you know, you'll throw out like, hey, you played for this coach. Like, well, actually, no, I didn't. I was there beforehand. And then you just edit the fuck out of it. Yeah, then we're just like, all right. Well, we'll Favorite interview? Out. Chris Long. Thank you. I appreciate it. First one ever. First one no, ever. you want me to answer that correctly? Yeah. Um, honestly. Ooh. Probably Coach O just because of his voice. Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> hey, I'm Coach O. I just love my Hummer. I believe the Hummer is the best vehicle on the road. Big, tough, aggressive, and it represents everything that we want at Ole Miss. There's certain levels that we've hit. You were the first. Yeah. So having that. Now, you were a little different, though, because PFT was good friends with you. I was good friends with Kyle. Yeah. Kyle and I had hung out a bunch. And so it didn't feel like, oh, my God, Chris. No, no, We had no, gone no. on Plus, Bar I'm Rescue not together. Fucking, yeah. Right. Right. So, but like. It's a the nice first... coat I had, too. Do you remember that peacoat? Nice. The first time we interviewed SVP. Uh, the first time, you know, Jim Harbaugh, Coach O, Theo Epstein. Like, there's a list of guys. You guys have made it, made it now, because I see, you know, when you're on A-Rod's private plane, you've made it. I mean, that was like, only that's once a tight circle. It was okay. just me and Hank. And they, they just didn't ignored really you the whole time. No, like, literally didn't talk uh, Most unexpected, uh, pardon, my, pardon my take fan. Zach Efron. That's, yeah, that that's, one still blows my mind. That was a funny one, too. It blows my mind. Because that one, and I... The fact that he listens and knows us was just... I did a double take. I was like, right. this isn't real. Right. Um, I was going to say, there's one thing unresolved from the PMT chapter of your and my life. Uh, because I've been on a few times. We talked about Killy, right? And you committed to climbing Kilimanjaro with me. And then you flaked because you Googled it and you realized it wasn't like wa walking up to the Hollywood sign. Mm -hmm. uh, or walking up to Walter Payton Hill. Mm -hmm. Um this is like a six-day hike. How many views would it take this interview to get for you to climb Killy with me or attempt it? Are you going to climb again? Yeah, I would if you if if we. But got you're to not. Views. No, I am. I have a friends and family year that I'm holding. Oh. I've done it four times. So people like Nick Foles, my brother, guys that have like said they want to climb. I'll climb again with my kids for sure. So then uh, I'll do that. You. I'll do that. Back to I will Bill climb. Cosby. My I kids aren't going to climb with years. With Dude, you think how many views on that this? Is, how many views on this episode? That's the greatest move I've ever made. Like the fact that I have 15 years now yeah. to either one die, to go somewhere that you can never find me, or just suck it up and climb Kilimanjaro. Okay, so we might get old cat. Yeah, I'm looking right at the. We might get old cat, and if we get say a million views on this interview, will you do it when my sons go? Yeah, I don't know if I want to share that space with you. How about 10 years from now? 10 years. 10 years. 10 years perfect. from now. A million views? Yeah, a million views 10 years from now. Make it happen. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to our next segment, which is called Where Are You On? In the business, this is a way we keep segments fresh. I don't want to just ask you questions all day. Right. You'll get there. We just did a transition. You'll get there. Eventually. You put in some music there for yeah. the transition? We'll probably edit in some things. Okay. Um, the, the editing process. If you need really... me to do, like, if you have a basketball, you White do, kids like, a... dabbing. Always on it. You like it? Love it. Fucking hate it. Why? It makes me so uncomfortable. Gives me the willies. God, is that, gives that? The, <laughs> that gives me the willies. Why? Because it's so uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable when you have. Okay, so you've if been playing. If my kid dabs, been, he's getting grounded. Your kid will dab. No, he has a mullet. You have always been on the field. You have to understand from the fan perspective. They just want to get on. If that you jumbotron. get on the jumbotron, understanding your brain trying to compute the fact that you're up there and also here, here, dab. That's all you got. Every, it's like a every reaction. Time it ha every time it happened over the last couple of years, I'd have at least one of my teammates on the Jumbotron come over and be like, hey, look, I'm not, they got another one. Yes. It's usually like Fletcher he'd, because they know it's like a known thing. I fucking hate it. See, the dab will never die, and I love the people who hate the dab because I just know they're not fun. Oh you should God. like what you like. I love the dab. Okay, I hate the dab. Okay. Uh, age limit on rushing the field at a collegiate game. Ooh. I've actually changed my opinion on this. So I used to be more on the side of if you're like a historic program, like Indiana basketball should not rush the court because yes. it's Indiana basketball. I'm now firmly on the let the kids be kids and having that moment. I rush the field 
Wisconsin versus Ohio State in 2003, rushed Camp Randall. Still think about, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. one of my memories from college. So you college. were like 26 at that point. Yeah, I was 26 at that point. That's one of my memories from college. I would never look down on any kid who wanted to have that moment. As long as it's organic and everyone. But what's the age limit? There is none. I, I can't do adults rushing the field. Well, not adults. Least. That's if you what are, I mean. if you, No, if you have a student, if you have an EDU address, you can rush the field. So if there's so if a 50 I go year back old, to school to get yes, my yes, and we win the BCS yes. next year, Virginia, yeah, okay, uh, yes, you can rush. Okay, if you have an EDU address, okay, you didn't graduate. I still have an EDU address. You didn't I graduate? haven't graduated yet. Damn, I might go back. So, you I know, didn't realize I was just goes to, to show you out. how cerebral you can be without a fucking degree. <laughs> um, Even Julian Edelman has a degree. Alrighty. Uh, <laughs> well, that proves it. Yes. <laughs> you know, he's just, uh, how about face paint at games? What's the age limit on that? Mm. What type of game? Pro football. That's probably like 50. 50? <laughs> yeah, 50. It almost becomes less of an <laughs> no. atrocity after 50 because at least the seven year old du- the 70 year old dude. With his face fucking painted, you're like, that's kind of endearing. This guy just, he doesn't care anymore. Well, your answer has to either be you can't face paint ever or like 50. Because okay. there's, you don't really see seven year olds face painting. Because if they do, then their dad did it. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm rethinking my position on Soccer's that. forever. Okay, soccer, soccer has you're the a big most. Soccer fa- fan. Well, they have the most face painters by far of any sport. Um, cloning. I don't think I'm on it. I'm on it. You are. Dinosaurs? This is animals, too. Would you clone your dog? I don't have one. That's a really insensitive fucking question. Your dog passed away? No. We had to rehome our dogs so they weren't getting along with Waylon. I'm totally good with it. I just want to make you feel Are you bad. serious? Yeah, this was years back. Fuck. You know? I was wondering where your bulldogs were. Yeah. I, but we really went through. It really it tore us up. Because they were like kids to us, but when they're nipping at your kids and growling, it's like you got to rehome them. So, yeah. Would Chub, you have, would shout you out call to Chubbs and Rambo. I love Chubbs them. Rambo, we still you... got their portraits everywhere. Damn. We know the family. We keep in touch. I mean, the the long we could bring up that too. We I've brought it up before, but the long family postcard where you guys photoshopped your dogs. We photoshopped the dog. In. People don't understand this. We were at Kyle's house in Lake Forest. We were look in his basement. There's he was a playing postcard. video games, not talking there to you. There's a postcard. The entire Long family, everyone was there. Howie, Howie Jr., everyone was there. And they had two dogs that it, at first glance, you're like, wow, those dogs are posing perfectly for the picture. They sure are. And you looked a little closer, you just straight up <laughs> photoshopped the dog into your Christmas card. That's my mom. Fantastic. Who knows all the things... That I was photoshopped into when I was a kid. Maybe my dad wasn't around a lot. That's Maybe true. he was really busy, and my mom just photoshopped me into a bunch of pictures all with my memories. dad, and we all these fake ass photo albums. It, it's really making me start to think a lot. Yeah. Would you clone your dog if you still had a dog? Well, three is a bit much, but to to, to make him survive longer. No, you clone. No, your dog dies, and you clone it, and you bring yeah, it back. Yeah, that's what I mean. You would do that. To, um, yeah. No, it becomes yeah, like a new fuck dog. It, fuck it. Uh, especially with a dog. Okay. All the implications be damned. See, and I want dinosaurs again. I want woolly mammoths. I want Tasmanian tigers. I want megalodons so people will stop fucking swimming in the ocean so much. It annoys the fuck out of me. I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't clone my dog. If you clone your dog so your dog passes away and then you clone it and a new dog that looks exactly like your old dog. I guarantee you, if you looked in that dog's eyes, if you looked in that dog's soul, it's you would notice dog. something a little different. Yeah. That would fuck you up. It means it, it, it's a little more confident because it knows it ain't going to die. It would just be a little bit of the soul Homeboy. has been gone. Homeboy's going nowhere. A little bit of the soul is not there, and you can notice. I wouldn't okay. clone my dog. I wouldn't, I'm not into cloning. Agree to disagree. Okay. Maybe we'll clone this discussion, and it'll be different, slightly different next time, and yeah. you'll have a better take. Look at my soul. Um, Nothing there. <laughs> There's no soul in there, bro. Yeah. There's more soul than there was a week ago. I'll tell you that yeah, much. Yeah, true. True. Uh, fans cheering injuries. We'll skip that. No. That's the, let's fans talk cheering about injuries because I was triggered. 
You were very triggered. We're talking about the Kevin Durant injury and the Raptors fans I cheering. I had a visceral reaction. You were very triggered, and I said we were, caps, we were, we were texting. All Toronto sports. I told you that is every city in America, it's not. every sports fan, if you get them in that one moment, I, I the, the analogy I used, if you're a Toronto Raptors fan and you were 25 years old and you went to the bar with your three buddies before that game and you're like, tonight is the night we're going to win the NBA title and Kevin Durant comes out, scorches you, goes down, you're going to cheer. You, you quietly, if you, if you figure you quietly out, fight your instincts internally. You nope. do not you do not make no effort and and really there's a code, bro. There's just a fucking code. Like, I understand what you're saying with the code. I'm telling you about the knee jerk reaction. If the Raptors fans cheered for about three seconds and they realized how big a scumbags there were, every city in America, every fan would have that knee jerk reaction. We're about to win the NBA here's, title. Here's what triggered me so badly using the word. Um, because it, it, it tickles you, I think, when I say the word triggered. Well, you're triggered about the word triggered. So here's what triggered me, bro, was the fucking guy goes down. He's risking his career. He's out there playing. Everybody cheers. And then instead of taking responsibility for it online, which is that sounds like an oxymoron, but Toronto sports fans acted like, after all this talk, all these threads I read about what a wonderful place it is, how much better it is than American cities. And I bought that shit because I love Toronto. I and too. I still love Toronto I as too. a city. But when your sports fan base acts like that and stop saying, I heard this, 2,000 of them. It was just 2,000. Oh, it was a few and they didn't know what was going on. They're waving goodbye. Yep. They're cheering the steal. No, they're waving goodbye. And then don't take fucking responsibility for it online, bro. Like... You're just like every other city. So stop acting different. Stop telling me it happens everywhere. I don't agree with that. I do And stop bringing up Philly fans in, in 20 plus years ago when we're talking about tonight. Like, I had people be, be like, what about Philly? And I'm like, yeah, it was classless shit and it was terrible. And they're still wearing it, obviously, but you can't wear it for one night. That's where I take issue. Just eat it for one night. What do you mean, fuck Toronto sports? So... Everything you just described, none of it surprised me. Because fans will react in the moment and want to, uh, you know, they'll, they'll react poorly in the moment. Totally, totally expected that to happen. You disagree with me there, but I think what Toronto fans cheering, being like, we're about to win the NBA title, was as genuine even though it's scumbaggy, maybe it's basketball because in football reaction. nowadays, at least they okay. really they do a good job with that. And then fans defending themselves and saying, "Well, it's just it's not all of us." That also is so classic fan base. This tribalism where people say, "No, my fan base is better than yours." This was an isolated incident. This is all how sports work. No, I understand, but maybe I just am frustrated with how sports work, and now I'm retired, so I can really hone in on how they work from this side of it. And I just was like, I had this visceral. And yeah, do I love KD? Fuck yeah, he's one of my favorite players. I, do too. I think he's awesome. Everything, the burner counts is awesome. Like the whole nine yards. He just his his level of give a fuck to me is just like so low and so high at the same time. Right. It's this perfect combination that makes him so interesting. And his brand is just really KD. So yeah, it was personal for me. And I didn't react, you know, years back when somebody got hurt in Philly on the baseline. I don't know. People kept sending me, you know. Um, videos like well, what about this like i lived in philly or played in philly before two years ago no and i wasn't on twitter when michael irvin got hurt right i would have said something then too i just think it's bullshit you just need to realize that this is what fans are and i'm talking the, the way i have like the reason that i think that i'm successful in my career is that i am no different than these people yeah. I am these people who are cheering in the moment so i understand and i can't stand what i really can't stand not to not to really go at you, but the people who get on Twitter right away saying, damn, Toronto should feel ashamed. That's total scumbags. Wow, what pieces of shit. No. Listen, I'll wear it. That's Gu you. That's all of us. Guilty as charged. It's not about the Toronto fans. They're less culpable than the guy who's outraged about it. That's the game we're playing. Right. And my thing is like, listen, like you can't expect, especially professional athletes, not to be like, yo, what the fuck? The, the Warriors 
reaction was completely expected and, and good. Like when they were like, fuck these fans. Yeah. They have every right to say, fuck these fans. Yeah. What I'm saying from the fan perspective is that will always exist in sports. Because don't people disagree. care too much. They don't disagree. And, they, and they're not in that position. And they've minimalized uh, athletes to not being people. So their injuries, they're like robots. Oh, the robots right. part broke. And the line I've always used is fans by nature are not, like mature adults and i'm speaking for myself including me in my, myself right if i was a mature adult i would not care as much as i do therefore you can deduce from me not being a mature adult that i will sometimes act like a fucking idiot this is good i could use this in other areas of my life i'm just gonna be like i am admitting that i'm not a mature adult so i can do it i'm trying every day to get better yeah but sometimes when i care too much about sports and i get upset I will do things that make me look like an absolute idiot. Here's a sport I love. Women's softball. And I oh. think it's better than college baseball. Where are you on I that? like that take. Okay. I, women's softball is electric. Um, the pitchers are unbelievable. I can't believe they hit that. There's no way. Because like, I say to myself, I'm watching a, a college baseball game, and I'm saying, okay, I probably can't hit a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. I know. But... I could probably get lucky if I just time it right mm -hmm. once in a while. Get a piece of it, pop it up. piece of it. College softball, I don't even think I'd be able to time it right because it's on you so fast. No chance. And 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 the balls are bigger. Yep. So that there's a bigger chance of it hitting you, like, in the side of the head. Right. Dome piece, yeah. The, you know, like, that whole... And the, and the ball's traveling out of the yard all the time. It's fast paced. There's less bullshit, unwritten rules like respect the game. Like people are like into it, and I think the pacing is just the biggest thing for me. So, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Now that we're talking about softball, can you go and start playing intramural sports right now? Please. No, I don't want to because I had a friend, Please. a former NFL player. Shout out to Tom Santi, who's a, a great, great man. Uh, he was uh, he was a tight end for the Colts for okay. a few years uh, in the Peyton Manning era. Played his whole career, suffered a few Dallas injuries. Clark? Played with Dallas Clark. Okay, but he's not Dallas Clark. No, he's not. Ben Utech? I said his name. Oh. Tom Santee. I already forgot it. Okay, Tom okay, Santee. Okay, so, so next, he gets out of the league. He joins a UVA Darden um, business school softball intramural team. And he's tracking a foul ball and pops his Achilles. First day. So you get through your whole career oh. without anything like that. And then you're sitting in a fucking hospital for a couple days. You didn't post stretch. No. You didn't stretch. No, that's not it. I'm not doing it. Listen, my dream, if I were a professional athlete and I retired, I would just go and dominate everyone and everything. Okay. I think you're just scared. Well, I'm also not that good at other sports. Oh, is that true? Yeah, I'm like a, I'm not a one-trick pony. I was, uh, you know, a four-sport athlete. Right. And you're asking, how's that possible? We'll get into that in another, another interview. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was a four sport athlete, but I wasn't like better than a seven at any anything other than baseball. But I still think that you would be able to dominate. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. So please go do it. Okay. Uh, I want to get through sports c conspiracies. We've got about yes. five minutes. Uh, I had a few jotted down here. Uh, I want to start with two two Chicago conspiracies. Okay. Uh, Jordan gambling retirement. Where are you on that? I don't believe in that one because you have to act to believe in that one. You have to ask yourself, why would they suspend him? Right. I would believe that they would maybe cover it up, but why would the NBA suspend their number one moneymaker? Yeah. I'm kind of down the middle on this one. Yeah. I, I think, like, I think it was, it had to do with his dad. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the fact that he dominated basketball and when he loved baseball and all that stuff, he was going through a lot. I just that one seems a little bit hard to figure out because if you think that David Stern sat down and said, MJ, we're suspending you, uh, but we're not gonna say it publicly, mm -hmm. what what does the NBA the, get gaining? from that? Yeah, yeah what are right. you getting? I'm with you. Right. The flu game. The flu game, he was poisoned. One hundred percent poisoned by have you seen the Utah Your bookie fans? Told you that. No, have you seen the Utah fans? Have you read anything about it? Well, I've five read five guys delivered the pizza. Listen, five I guys delivered the pizza. I Not the burger but do place. You really five believe? Guys. Okay, so if you believe he was eating shrimp pizza Tainted in Utah, pizza. shrimp pizza. Yeah, pizza with shrimp on yeah. top, delicious from the ocean mm -hmm. in Utah before the biggest game of his life. You believe that? 
You, would you eat shrimp, Pete? What, you would eat okay, fucking pizza. Okay, what's the alternative? With, what's the alternative? That he was hungover? I wouldn't believe that. Well, I would say, I, what I would say is go, well, the alternative to eating shrimp pizza is a burger with no cheese on it or something. But you're saying, what's the alternative? <laughs> it's a, the, the theory. The alternative theory to me was, I've heard sun poisoning mixed with drinking and golfing. I've heard, I've heard he left his team hotel because it wasn't nice enough. He went to a higher altitude hotel. Uh, <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, these okay. are... These are Utah my fans are crazy. You've seen it. You've seen it with the whole Russ Westbrook okay. thing. That's you know they are crazy. They are passionate. They are ferocious. They know that Michael Jordan will beat them no matter what. Yeah. There's no chance they're beating Michael Jordan. So again, unless caping, caping for pa- fans here. It the, happens. Yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes you listen. You can't. But it just it more of a testament well, when to guys the goat were, status of Michael Jordan that he got poisoned and still won and, thirty-eight points. And it's kind of a nice. And it's kind of a nice uh, strategy, low-key, is like if you leaked it, you got the flu. No one on the other team wants to guard you. Correct. I mean, like... That's true. Or And here's what gave it away. Scotty Pippen and all those guys were fucking hugging him and Dude, shit. He had the ice on his neck. Like, bro, you're all going to get the flu. So that's why I don't true. believe it was food the poisoning. flu. It was food poisoning. Deliberately by Utah fans. Okay. Uh, Cal Ripken power outage. I believe that one. Yeah, I do too. I believe that one, especially because we interviewed Cal Ripken, oh. and I think it was said beforehand, not by Cal Ripken, because you know how these interviews work. It's usually PR people that are way overprotective. Yeah. So Cal, I think, is a to- is, was a yeah. very nice guy, answered everything, but his PR people said something like, hey, yeah, no Kevin Costner. Yeah. So he, I think it's real. So you think that's real? I think it's real. Um Probably just want to – let's hit one more and then I'll close it. Um, would you rather do Sunny Liston or Frozen Envelope with Ewing? Can I throw one at you Yeah, instead? throw one at me. All right. all right, I have one to throw at you. Have you re- read about this at all? It's one of the most interesting ones. 1998 World Cup. Ronaldo has a seizure before the final against France, and apparently the theory goes Nike – made him play because they had invested so much money into his uh, campaign. Stop it. There also is an alternate theory there where the Brazilian team was paid $15 million to throw the game and Ronaldo took himself out of the lineup and then at the last second, Nike was like, you got to play, and he played. It's The whole thing is very weird. Something happened to so him. So I have some reading to do here. He was out of the lineup about, I think it was three hours beforehand, and then he was miraculously back in. I believe it. In. I believe it, because you, you believe anything with soccer. Right. It's And you, being a big soccer fan. Owner. owner soccer owner. Sorry, Swansea. excuse me. Uh, you can be both, I guess. But uh, it is to such a huge level, like soccer and the World Cup especially, and Nike and how much money they yeah. put into this. Get into this one. Okay. It's I it's will. an interesting one. I've read a bunch. I've I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos, so I'm pretty much an expert on it. It's interesting. Okay, perfect. So um, again, Dan, thanks for being here. You're supporting uh, struggling artists here. Uh, and I want to do this again. It's yeah. Let's let's do it again. And uh, you know, most notably, on a serious note, congratulations on having a child and having sex, um, which you often Did. congratulate people on. Yes. Uh, but here. I want you to keep in mind something. My son, Luke, who's six months old, has won two uh, championships since he's been born. Virginia men's basketball and St. Louis blues hockey. That's a .333 repeated championship per month um, analytical assessment. Good luck. What what number did he... What number was he what? on the team? Oh, no, he wasn't. He's a fan. Oh, we? I mean, oh, so you're luck. saying we for fans? Yeah. You, you, he, you got, did you, he play in the you game? You guys, you guys. Interesting. But what I was going to say is maybe if you had had sex a year earlier, double True. doink wouldn't have happened. That's cool.